Hey everyone, Fierce Man coming at you, and I hope this video finds you doing super, super well. Wanted to do just a quick little video here, just kind of on my thoughts about the Magic Leap, kind of revealing all the information in and price point and making it developer ready. So one thing I do want to stress, just like HoloLens, just like when the Rift came out, just when the Vive came out, really when all of these headsets came out, they had developer headsets available. So that was something that obviously changed from when the developer kit came out to when it actually hit the shelves. There's going to be a dramatic difference. But it also means that along the same timeline, we're probably going to see price changes, kit changes, feature changes for these headsets probably it's going to take around three to four years. So as far as consumer ready augmented reality, we're looking at probably in the ballpark of so it's 2018 now, maybe 2021, 2022, when it's kind of first hitting the shelves and then probably going through the same cycle that uh, VR is going through right now, which is just kind of huge hype, slows down and then slowly starts to build up. Long term, I think both these pieces of technology will have a huge, huge impact. And in specifically just for augmented reality, these headsets are just the stepping stone towards something bigger. Now, I could talk about in this video anything about criticizing Magic Leap, how they got two billion plus dollars and uh, set all of these kind of big expectations and didn't deliver on them. But I think the rest of the Internet is already doing on that. So I want to shed a little different perspective on the topic and more on the positive side of things just because I don't think it's really being talked about as much as people like to criticize things. And that's just the fact that yes, it cost Magic Leap a lot to build this and yes, it it, it is kind of disappointing, but the, if you think about it, tech-wise, plus or minus, I would say, actually, I would say plus, it's a little better than say, HoloLens and or probably a lot better and maybe compared to Meta uh, you could you can make a different argument but because Meta has a smaller price point and but is tied to a PC among the headsets there, there's variants but I think what that brings is really really good competition to the space and besides and like if you look at it from say Oculus and Vive They've both pushed each other to make the hardware better, make the price point better, and just make it a lot more affordable for the average day consumer. And that price continually goes down pretty much every year. And that's a huge deal. Yes, HoloLens started at 3000, Meta starting at 1000, and Magic Leap starting at also 3000. But I think the big thing to keep in mind is that those price points will go down over time. And while that price point isn't accessible at all to consumers, it is accessible to uh, basically the wide B2B audience. And this is something that uh, a company called Daiquiri has been really excelling in, which is they have a very bulky headset, probably costs <laughs> over $3,000. It is an augmented reality headset, has tracking and whatnot, and they use it for teaching people in the fields how to, to repair things, how to build things, et cetera, et cetera. And just by popping up these information displays and having kind of a networked sense in augmented reality, they're able to actually do something while a bit cheesy and not many people have actually tried the Daiquiri headset, but effective enough to, to help in these situations. I think the same thing could be applied to HoloLens and it's probably already being used in that sense, as well as magically. And especially with Magic Leap, I mean, when you think of $3,000 price point, it is not a consumer ready device. I mean, like I said at the beginning, this is a dev kit, so that price will continually go down. But I think the B2B scenario for Magic Leap, and this is where they really need to go 100% all in, is where they can kind of really shine. And I, I do think, I mean, I haven't tried it, so I, I can't say anything about like the hardware per se, but I, I do think the form factor and the input mechanisms are, compared to the rest of the augmented reality headsets, a lot better. I absolutely hate having tried HoloLens and Meta, the hand tracking. It's so bad. 
This is the reason why we have controllers in VR is because hand tracking really isn't there yet. I hate having to go pinch, pinch, pinch on the HoloLens. It just, just doesn't feel as a like a really good intuitive AR input. We just kind of want like the ideal goal for AR is for it to seamlessly flow in into our scenarios. While I mean having hand tracking is nice, just the I mean the inputs just aren't there within Meta and HoloLens. What Magic Leap is bringing to the table is a I can't remember if it's three off, six off controller uh, that's that's tracked and and inputs uh, that don't require you to use really bad hand tracking. And uh, and I saw on Twitter uh, Dan uh, from Unity was playing around with it and he showed a kind of small little hand tracking demo for Magic Leap. Wasn't really that impressive <laughs> to be per perfectly honest. I think the tracking still uh, not to diss on Dan, but like I think the tracking on Magic Leap was. A little poorly executed but that's okay because they have that controller so I mean there are a lot of things to think about while you can continually dis magic leap at the end of the day as long as they have money and continually are quote-unquote innovating which I hope they continually do and having knowing some friends that are working there I think they will that will just hopefully to just summarize this video increase the competition make it more viable in the b2b space and hopefully three to four years down the line, we have really good headsets that are consumer ready. Uh, probably not perfect, just like VR headsets are not perfect, but getting there. And the more steps in that direction, I think is a really, really good thing. It's a, like I said, it's fun to diss on things just because of really bad marketing that Microsoft has done, that Magic Leap has done. But at the end of the day, I, I think we have to look at it at what it is. Um, and what it can be used for and see what the future implications are. I'm excited for that. I personally am. I think the future, we're, we're not there yet, but uh, it is 2018, but we're not there yet. And in time, things will start to get better. And I think that will really, really help. And hopefully some of the funds that Magic Loop used in fundraising actually get used towards that. So let me know what you think in the comments. I mean, it's obviously a pretty hot topic right now, but I, I think it's, it's something worth discussing and trying to shape how augmented reality really happens as well as VR and maybe down the pipe, VR and AR headsets come together and that would be super, super awesome. But yeah, that, that summarizes this video up and again, love to hear what you have to say. So thanks so much for watching and until next time, this has been Fused Man and I'm signing out.